On our broadcast tonight, direct hit up and down the East Coast, the terrible toll from a storm of history-making intensity that has reshaped the coastline. Lives have been changed in an instant by winds, by water, and fires. So much has been washed away. Tonight, we'll survey the damage five stories beneath the nation's largest city with the governor of New York. Also tonight, our first view from the air and the moment of crisis. The heroes who came to the rescue at a big hospital plunged into darkness. Nightly news begins now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. A huge portion of the eastern seaboard is crippled tonight. Millions of viewers cannot see this broadcast because they're heading into another night in the dark. A huge area of the country on its knees where life has ground to a halt because of this one storm. The death toll is now at least 40. The biggest city in the country has been staggered. Power is out for more than 8 million homes and businesses, and that's an early lowball estimate across 15 states. An early guess at the cost of this storm would begin at $50 billion in damage and lost business. And the map of the Atlantic coastline, especially the Jersey Shore, has been simply redrawn in some areas. The president is touring the damage in New Jersey tomorrow. Today, he told the folks across this entire region, America is with you. Here is where this storm is now. It's centered 50 miles east-southeast of Pittsburgh. So think of it this way. The same storm that plunged the east coast into darkness was today causing 60-mile-an-hour winds as far away as Gary, Indiana. The storm's being felt in Wisconsin. It made a direct hit, as we said, on the Jersey Shore. NBC's Ron Allen is in Point Pleasant Beach to start off our coverage tonight. Ron, good evening. Good evening to you, Brian. Yes, the storm came ashore about an hour's drive south of here, and it completely obliterated beachfront properties like this hotel. The ocean is about a block or so behind me, and last night the waters came rushing down streets like this, waist-deep water, and it's dropped about uh, sand that's also now several feet deep all over the place. In so many communities like this one, there is devastation as far as the eye can see. The Garden State woke up to a devastated landscape. Entire communities swamped, houses ripped from their foundations. The beach erosion caused by the relentless surf so profound, it rearranged the Jersey Shore. Its famed boardwalks torn apart. This is the amusement park at Seaside Heights, before and after the storm. Governor Chris Christie, who toured his battered state by air, described what's happened as unthinkable. The devastation that's happened to New Jersey is beyond what's happened to anyone else, at least from the reports that I've seen so far. And that should come as no shock since the storm made landfall here. It hit just south of Atlantic City, the gambling and tourist destination, leaving residents who defied a mandatory evacuation order stranded. Dozens had to be rescued from shelters of last resort where the power failed. In northern New Jersey, more search and rescue after a tidal surge pushed a river over its banks. Residents said the water rose five feet in a matter of minutes. It was like a lake in our basement, and it, and it filled up to our, all the way up to our stairs. There was no phone lines, the electricity was out, and all our phones were dead, basically, so we couldn't call absolutely nobody. Across the state, 2.4 million customers, 60% of the population have no power. And the worst of it was probably right along the coast, in towns like Point Pleasant Beach, where this morning, some who chose to ride out the storm told of an unbelievable experience. It was almost surreal last night. It was almost very surreal with just the power and the, and the awe of, uh, of everything going on. So, you know, it's only once in a lifetime to see stuff like this. The town sits behind a huge line of sand dunes built to protect it. But last night, it was no match for the power of Hurricane Sandy. It overwhelmed the barriers and sent torrents of water and sand rushing into the town. Wow. Oh, my God. That's your kitchen? Yeah. Teresa Springstead showed us what was left of her beachfront restaurant. That was the whole dining area. It was all, there were walls and windows. This, you know, is where our to-go was, and this is our kitchen. There are no walls and windows now. Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. Let's go. I don't have time for this. 
Today, as utility crews tried to clear the roads, police and firefighters went door to door, making sure there weren't any victims. As is the case up and down the shore, residents were not allowed to return home today until it's safer. And given what's happened here and across this state, officials say that could take several days or more. And it all happened in a matter of hours. Tonight here, the winds are calm. It hasn't rained at all today. And the ocean is now breaking about 30 or 40 yards offshore. It's very calm. But of course, Brian, the damage has been done. When we say it redrew the map of the Jersey Shore, sadly, we mean it. Ron Allen, Point Pleasant Beach tonight, starting off our coverage. One of the awful dramas that unfolded last night happened in the city of New York, the borough of Queens, the neighborhood of Breezy Point. What was left there today looked like the after effects from a battle in a war zone. Mara Schiavacampo covered for us all day long. Mara, good evening. Brian, good evening. The fire behind me is still smoldering and this building is destroyed. Sadly, it's one of many that burned to the ground last night in a community that's already faced one too many tragedies. Last night, residents here in Breezy Point thought water would be the biggest threat from Sandy, not fire. The flames that burned through the night devastated this tiny community, destroying 111 homes and damaging 20 more. Sandy's winds whipped through the town, spreading the fire across the entire neighborhood. Looked like a forest fire out in the Midwest. The winds were just devastating, blowing from one building to the next one, and those buildings were close together. We had the fire scanner all on all night. The fire department couldn't get to Breezy. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Remarkably, the fire department says there were only three minor injuries, but it took more than 200 firefighters to control the fire, and pockets are still smoldering throughout the area. Devastation. And our house is, you know, <clears throat> in, in somewhat good condition. <clears throat> Behind you here. All the 118 of our neighbors' houses have gone. As our team drove here today, we came across a fire burning in Bell Harbor, just one mile from Breezy Point. This is an area all too familiar with tragedy. The Bell Harbor fire was on the very same block hit by a plane crash in 2001. And Breezy Point, which has just 5,000 residents, lost 32 in the September 11th attacks. Today, they suffered yet another loss. Everyone here is very close, and uh, it's a shame. It's, 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 so, it's so sad. Breezy Point will have to rebuild, but not alone. Many of the residents of those burned homes weren't there last night, having evacuated for Sandy. The area did see significant storm damage, including several feet of flooding. Brian? Maris Giavacampo with just one of the dramas that unfolded in New York last night. We want to go to lower Manhattan, the tip of the island. NBC's Ann Thompson, who rode it out in Battery Park City. And when you think about it, this storm didn't have a four or a five attached to it. It had a relatively casual name, and yet they've proven it had the lowest center of uh, uh, pressure ever recorded of any storm in our hemisphere. And it sure packed a wallop here in New York City, Brian. You know, 8 million people share 400 square miles in New York City. They are a tough, resilient bunch. But this storm showed even the most prepared that they weren't prepared enough. Even New York bowed to the furious power of nature. Gusts of 57 miles an hour ripped the face off this building as Sandy's winds and rain tore through the city. A record storm surge, almost 14 feet, flooded lower Manhattan, filling the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel with water. The force too much for the city's power grid, flood water shorting out this Con Ed substation. Three quarters of a million New Yorkers lost electricity. A few people were congregated around a radio just trying to get information because no one has power, no one has internet. Adding to the misery daylight revealed. It's amazing. I mean, cars are completely destroyed. They were submerged underwater. I mean, I, I'm, I'm floored by what happened. No borough was spared, from this oil tanker beaching on Staten Island to a beach community in Queens. This is a massive storage unit from a construction site. It floated over here or was blown over here. Get this, all the way from across the street. You see those other containers that are there right now. The mayor said this may be the worst storm in the city's history. The damage we suffered across the city is clearly extensive and it will 
not be repaired overnight. The subway system that carries 5 million people is flooded and could take four days to repair. Water damage to LaGuardia's runways will keep it closed for at least another day. And 1,000 feet above Midtown Manhattan, that crane still dangles, keeping streets down below blocked off. Oh, my God. The rush of water and wind at South Street Seaport toppled streetlights and carried mannequins a block from their store. You can see, like, by that, by line, it's about six feet. At this nearby apartment building, the challenge to get nine feet of water out of the basement. We have only one generator outside pumping it, and, and, and that could take days. An enormous task, sure to test New York's patience. Slowly, New York will return to normal, and a big step comes tomorrow morning when the opening bell rings at the New York Stock Exchange, which has been closed for two straight days, something the weather hasn't done since the 1800s. Brian? Unbelievable night in New York City. Ann Thompson, thanks very much. Earlier today, we went five stories underground beneath the streets of the city to what on a normal day is a busy commuter train hub beneath the World Trade Center site, the commuter train line called PATH that was last shut down after 9-11 in a train station that's still being rebuilt since 9-11, where the tracks last night filled with 13 feet of water in seconds and where the governor, Andrew Cuomo, was being briefed on the cleanup today. We got a chance to speak with him. So let's talk infrastructure, Governor. Short of a WPA, short of a Rooseveltian undertaking to rebuild our cities, how do we rebuild our cities? Because we can't have this. Yeah. Well, what makes it worse is this is already the reconstruction site, right? This is one of the largest reconstructions that the country is doing at this time. Uh, I think it's, it's actually uh, a different phenomenon. We have to come to the realization that we are dealing with extreme weather patterns in a way that we haven't seen probably ever. Uh, and the frequency of these extreme weather patterns and the consequences can be devastating if we're not ready for it. And you take a city like New York, uh, flooding we have not experienced before. You know, parts of the country deal with it in and out, uh, but it's not one of the things that New York is accustomed to. Uh, the design of the city is not conducive to it. And last night, I'll tell you the truth, it was frightening. Uh, downtown Manhattan, we had the Hudson River came over the banks and was pouring into the ground zero site uh, at such a volume that it was really frightening. And this was all filled with water. Uh, what we're looking at now, this goes back about five miles to the other end of the train track, which is in New Jersey. Um, and we have to figure out how to pump out this water. Think of the three governors, Malloy, Connecticut, Christie, New Jersey, Cuomo, New York, rebuilding coastlines, or at least talking about plans today. Are we the new Amsterdam? Well, you know, I, I said kiddingly the other day, uh, we have a 100-year flood now every two years, right? Uh, there is a frequency to this. And uh, this is really a new problem for New York State. Uh, we have not seen a flood like this, uh, damage like this, in our generation, period. Uh, people who've worked in the subway system, the construction industry in this uh, state, have said they've never seen damage like this, period. So uh, it's a new reality for us, and I think it's one that we're going to have to deal with. Now, on this site, um, this is the Ground Zero site. This is a monument to human capacity uh, and human endurance, uh, and this is New Yorkers' way of saying we're not going to give up, we're going to come back, and uh, we will, and this city will rebuild, and the state will rebuild, and I believe we will be the better for it. In a city where today people were talking about building seawalls, the kind they have in New Orleans, our talk with the governor of New York deep underground earlier today. Still ahead as we continue tonight, remember Election Day a week away with so much destruction after this storm. A big question now for a lot of folks in a lot of places, are they going to be able to vote?